Our year end review coverage with some of our elected officials highlighting how their goals concluded for this year. WNER 2 News Brittany Verner sat down with Mayor Brandon Scott yesterday. Now we're hearing from the perspective from City Council President Nick Mosby, who talks about failures and success the city has experienced and how they're continuing to address the issues that concern us all. Baltimore City Council President Nick Mosby says this has been a challenging year for the entire city, but now looking back, the council president is highlighting some of the things from a legislative perspective, which shows progress. 2023, a year that experienced highs and lows from the perspective of city leaders as it relates to various topics, some including city budgets, youth violence, and public safety. This is the first time in 125 years that the council had the ability uh, to not only cut from the proposed budget from the administration, but also redirect funding. Like increasing financial support to those who fix our roads and pick up our trash. You know, folks that are are digging ditches in the middle of the night uh, to folks that are our essential workers that are keeping our city literally operating on it and on a regular basis. From City Council that, President Nick Mosby's perspective, those are just a few of this year's successes. There were also many challenges as it relates to public safety. The Brooklyn mass shooting being the largest mass shooting in the city's history, leaving a disturbing memory, not only by the incident, but by the police's response. When I look back at 2023, it's probably um, my saddest moment um, as council president, um, uh, not just what the tragedy that occurred, um, but the lack of response and dignity uh, to that protecting and service of that community from the police department. That mass shooting killing Aliyah Gonzalez and Kyla Spagbimi and injuring 28 others, 15 of whom were minors. We know that all day there's been calls of fights and been calls of guns. For that to occur the way it occurred uh, is really difficult uh, for us to come up with any rationale other uh, than just the lack of, of response and care because it was a poor community. Another prevalent discussion, youth violence and how the city administration is working on getting to the root cause of juvenile crime. How can we um, get to our children before they get to the criminal justice system? What are the things that we can do and put in place to better protect them? He says this starts with identifying the children that are in the pipeline to be juvenile offenders. And ensure that um, when the red flags pop up, like they're not attending school, you know, in elementary school. And also eradicating the, the dropout pipeline. We know that, you know, when we talk about certain middle schools uh, and pathways to certain neighborhood high schools, they're our largest places of, of young folks who are dropping out of school. Working with state partners to dig deep into the data that shows which kids are often absent and identifying inefficiencies with the Department of Juvenile Services, like the home monitoring system, which Council President Nick Mosby says has been ineffective for years. When we know that we have young folks that are 13, 14 years old on home monitoring, they should be in school uh, during the time in which they should be in school. And with the city on pace to end the year with under 300 homicides for the first time in almost a decade, City Council President Nick Mosby says he still does not view this as an accomplishment, but instead a reason for city leaders to work even harder to eradicate the problem. For us to pat ourselves on the back as if, you know, because we're only going to have 200 or 290 versus 310 or 320, I think is definitely the wrong approach and sends the wrong message to the 280 or 290 uh, victims and their families. City Council President Nick Mosby says part of the main focus for his administration next year will be youth violence, getting to the children before they reach the juvenile justice system. Also, the city taking back control of the Baltimore Police Department through local control, and that's something he's hoping to solidify by the end of the first quarter of 2024. Brittany Verner, WMAR 2 News. Brittany also talked to Baltimore City State's Attorney Ivan Bates what he says about the accomplishments as well as one of the biggest challenges his office faces tomorrow at 6.